Today, off the southwest coast of Britain, I am after a monster from the deep. And I mean a big monster. I'm not joking, man. Some of these beasts are seven foot long and they've been known to bite fishermen's fingers clean off. Spoiler alert, we catch one. In fact, we catch a few. Oh my God. Beneath the surface of our lakes, seas and locks, there's an underwater world that has sustained us for centuries. That is a lot of velvet crab. And for the people who live along the 19,000 miles of our iconic coastline, fish on. fishing is their life. We've got a hell of a system coming in. I'll be meeting these dedicated men and women whose oh, office yeah, 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 is yeah. the ocean. That's an extraordinary fish. It's like a dinosaur from the sea, isn't it? And there's a nice one there. Oh, no! I feel so <laughs> inadequate. <laughs> and following their catch from port to plate. Is there anything you haven't battered? But life at sea can be both incredible... Hello, my Whoa, just when you thought it couldn't get any better. ..and perilous. <laughs> I'll be searching for old favourites... That's a beautiful cod. ..to some absolute sea monsters. I just thought it was fisherman's tail. No, that really is a giant. So join me as I tramp and camp along this wonderful land of ours. How is that for a fishing backdrop? And go fishing from coast to coast. It really is a magnificent place, the British Isles. This is the Southwest, a treasured holiday spot for many who choose to come and soak up the sun. But scratch the surface of holiday homes and posh restaurants and you find a murky and mysterious past. A place where fish have grown from tiddlers into absolute abominations. Where shipwrecks and mermaids mixed and where coves littered the coastline. Devon and Cornwall was the perfect place to bury, smuggle and stash. Not so long ago, this part of the world was awash with thieves hiding in the shadows of the coastline. And they were smuggling goods such as brandy and rum. It was a form of piracy. The images and ideas we have of swashbuckling pirates came from smugglers in the southwest. But long before pirates would use them to hide out, fish found these coves made the perfect spots to make their homes and shield themselves away from prying eyes to grow into beasts of the sea. I've come along the coast a bit to Weymouth because I've got word that there's something in these waters that is utterly mind-blowing. And you need to see it to believe it. I'm hoping I've got nerves of steel today for what we're going after. Because let me tell you, I'm going to need them. Good morning, Mick. How are you, lad? Nice to see you, Robson. Mick and his friends get together throughout the year to charter a boat big enough to handle big waves and big monsters. And I mean big monsters. I think these guys are talking tactics and how to deal with what's out there. And what's out there? Only one of the biggest eels in the world. The conger. But I don't think they want to share their strategies. I'm not feeling part of the gang at the moment. Have you noticed none of them are talking to me? Yeah. These guys have got this kind of look on their face. This knowing smile. That this young fella from the northeast of England has no idea what he's in store for. You're going to catch a conger, all right? You wish you hadn't. That's what they're saying. These demons of the deep are massive. They're notorious and terrifying predators that can take huge great lumps out of you. The biggest conger ever caught on British shores was over seven feet long and weighing an incredible 130 pounds. And for these boys, size is everything. 
holy grail for us is to catch a 100-pound eel. How do you get a 100-pound eel out of that water and onto the boat? This is extreme the fishing. One. You are going to be tested today. I can't wait. But you know how he's going to catch the biggest, don't you? You know, John. You're looking at him. Ah, it wouldn't be fishing without the banter. Or a bit of a wager. We've got a 20 pound bait for the biggest eel of the day. Biggest uh, conga wins 20 quid. Bit, bit of fun of yeah. everyone, of everyone that wants to join in. We're all in it to win it. We all want the big one. That's the, that's the main target. But I, I, like all the rest of them, whoever does it, I'll be the first one to shake their hand and very reluctantly give them the 20 pound. You know what they say, though? <laughs> Even a blind squirrel will catch a nut down again. <laughs> Are you in our 20 Mate. pound bet then? Throw the gauntlet down. Right, Paul. 20 quid, biggest. I've got to ring my missus. That's in my pocket. Money for the weekend. Come on, hurry up. Oh, go on then. Thank you very much. 20 quid, please, Dave. Well done. Copy. Well done. Thank you, Paul. Make sure it's real, mate. Give us your money. It's hard earned. You take money from an old age pensioner. I know. I can't believe that. <laughs> Thank you, Robson. What, so eight we... anglers, 20 quid, 160 yeah. quid? What? Are, that's like changing money, man. Right. The conga comp is on. Here we go. All right, then, guys, come on out. Let's go, go. Get yourselves down. We're losing the tide all the time now. About a pound of lead. Go on down. Can you hear that? That's the sound of competition. We've anchored up, the lines are set, the baits are out, and we're waiting for the conga to arrive. And just like that, all the banter stops. Whoa, the yeah. bite is on, yeah. mixing. Yeah. I'm out on the English Channel, on the aptly named Offshore Rebel, where the atmosphere could be cut with a filleting knife. Whoa, the yeah. bite is on. Yeah. Mix in. Yeah. I'm going to reel up. Well done, Mick. Handling these bad boys takes some work. What do you know, mate? Uh, You're in the lead first one of the day. Well, that's, that's per normal. <laughs> <laughs> mate, that's a big conga reel, man. It's a start. Yeah. I'm hoping to get some twice the size of that. Are yeah. you saying this is a small one? Yeah, that's probably 30 pound. 30 pound? Yeah, and we want to catch some twice that size today. And as quick as it came on board... And he swims free for another day. Oh, hang on, hang on, Mick! Your throne may have been usurped, Mick. Whoa, Paul! That's what we came for. <laughs> <laughs> This has to be 67. Oh, what is that? I mean, 65. Oh my gosh, that is a monster. That is a proper conga reel. Paul, man, I just thought it was Fisherman's Tail. No. That really is a giant. That really is a monster it from is. the deep. It is. That is what, it's nine feet? Mate. Have you seen? No one's talking to you. No yeah, one's looking at you. Well, that's all right. I don't mind. <laughs> you see the envy on their faces. I could be smug now. Mate, that's the competition winner right there. Hopefully. Hopefully. Look at them. They're like kids. Paul gets a 65-pounder. They're all poaching his spot. We can't get in here. Poachers a lot here. There's nothing else for it. I'm going to reclaim my spot, as it's the last chance of the day. Oh, hang on. Oh. Yeah, we're in, guys. Yeah, this is a fish. 
Oh, we're in. Here we go. Got collar. Oh, he's a well, decent that's not one. a bad one. He's decent. That's not bad. Mate, it? that will do me. That will do me. <laughs> Whoa! You've done well. He might not be the biggest of the day, but for me, he's the best. That's definitely a bronze medal right there. Well, I might be 20 quid down, but at least my reputation's intact. Well done, Paul. You did well. I may not have won today, but how can you feel like a loser? A backdrop like this, catching fish like we've been catching today, and in lovely company. Great crack. I came, I caught, and I conquered. Yay! <laughs> oh, thanks, lads. Thanks, lads. Leaving behind Weymouth and my 20 big ones, I'm back on the road heading to Penzance and the infamous La Morna Cove. A place that was awash with buccaneers back in the day, smuggling over half a million barrels of brandy. The marauders would come ashore in small boats, leaving their ships in the waters of the bay. And as with fishing, sometimes you don't always need a bigger boat. How are we doing, lads? Oh, good. Right Glorious morning, how are you? Two of the UK's best kayak fishermen, Liam and Steve, are here to bring me bang up to date. I mean, talk about state of the art. Are, they, are these the, the, the modern day version of kayak? Ab absolutely, yeah. And uh, with kayaks, you'll typically think of people paddling a kayak. Yeah. Well, these are pedal drive kayaks. Right. This is the Mirage Drive. Fin swish side to side beneath the kayak. Mimics the action of a penguin swimming through the water. Oh, great, OK. And incredibly efficient, fast. You're using your legs, so your hands are free to fish with. Let's have a competition today. Yeah, Either biggest great. fish, yeah, most yeah. fish, what should we do? I reckon point a fish. A point for one fish? Yep. Yeah. Two points for a ras, because that's what we're trying to catch today. I like it. You're only allowed one mackerel, in case we find a shoal, because we don't want to spend the day pulling up mackerel, do we? <laughs> Why not? And how about... We'll do it all for the title, Prince of Lamorna. I love it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's catch a fish on a kayak. <laughs> I tried it once before. Didn't catch anything. It's not my favourite way to catch fish. But first, you have to actually get on the thing. There's got to be easier ways to get in the water. And after several attempts, I'm finally good to go. Ready? You're off. Yeah. Right, so game on. Ras are the prize winners we're after. These beauties are mainly found here in the southwest, and although edible, we tend not to eat them. With over 600 different kinds of them, I'm hoping my luck's gonna change. Fish on! What, is Liam in already? Woo! Wow! <laughs> What'd you get? Beautiful male cookie ras. Absolutely stunning. So how's about that first catch of the day? Mate, that fish really looks like it doesn't belong here. That kind of belongs Absolutely in Hawaii tropical. or the Seychelles. Very it? tropical, yeah. First one of the day. Best points to me. Fish on. Cool. What'd you get? Uh, Ballon Ras. Big bruiser of the sea. Well done, mate. So, Liam's got a cuckoo ras. Steve's got a big ballon. Absolute stonker. No pressure, Robson. And just when you thought all hope was lost, Yeah, fish on! My first ever kayak fish! <laughs> Get in, boys! What have you caught, Robson? Beautiful ballon ras, man! Absolute beauty! And what size can these grow up to? So, these will get up to about eight or nine pounds. Wow! Yeah, That's a big but typically two to three pounds, and there's a nice one there. Oh, no! <laughs> I feel so inadequate! <laughs> Mate, that's a stunner! Great, put him back. Yeah. Fish on. Hey. Is that a fish? Yeah. Good man. Ballon Ras. Beauty. Oh, you in? Yeah, you see it? There you go. Yeah. There you go. Fish on. We are in. So that's two all to me and Liam, and one point to Steve. Ballon Ras. Oh, oh nice. no, Liam's in the lead. Woohoo! What you got, Liam? Another Ballon Ras. He's the omnipotent angler. 
And at the minute, I'm the impotent angler. How many you had, Liam? Oh, eight or nine, I think. Eight or nine? Oh, this one's number ten. You're joking, he's back in. Oh, wow! Pollock! Pollock! Nice Pollock, man. Lovely little Pollock. All right, hard to starboard. Here we go. Looks like Liam's going to take the title of Prince of La Morna. But the day's not quite over just yet. Yeah, fish on. Oh, this is a big fish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a good fish. Oh, crikey Moses, this is taking line. This is actually pulling the boat. <laughs> Bloody hell, it's a huge mackerel. Absolute stunner. Boom! Knocked it out the park. I gotta get 20 points for that. <laughs> <laughs> he's a lively one. Getting on one board. Oh, you got yeah, him. Yeah, he's a beauty. Lovely. You beauty, you have made my day of all the fish we've caught today. That one's made me smile the most. Do -do 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 -do. It's easy to see how the pirates and smugglers were sustained here by the continuous supply of weird and wonderful fish. <laughs> Smiles all round. You know, when I said I don't like kayak fishing, well, actually, it's my favourite method ever of all time. Every time. I love it. Having conquered kayak fishing, I'm crossing the spectacular Southwest Peninsula, making my way to Brixham. It's a place I know and love and where I've spent many an hour attempting to catch fish. Heading towards the ocean is just as joyous today as it was back then when I first set eyes on the coast. Today, I was really hoping to be out on a trawler pulling up place, but a storm decided to descend. It was that bad, the Met Office even gave it a name. Simply put, Ava couldn't come at a worse time of year. Not able to go out in 70 mile per hour winds, I ended up doing this. Right, first cast. Here we go. That's good enough. And this. Oh, was that an inquiry there? No, I think it's the wind on it. And this. I haven't caught a fish, but I've caught a lot of seaweed. And then this pitched up. Oh, it was a seal. <laughs> That's why the fish aren't here. <laughs> so between the weather and the wildlife, I didn't catch a thing. Nada. Nothing. Nout. But when catching doesn't quite work out, it's off to the quayside where over a hundred boats offload their fish, ready to be prepared, cleaned and readied for our plates. Sold in chippies up and down the land, Place is one of the UK's most popular fish, and the guys at family-run Brixham Seafish are certainly going to make me earn my place. Pun intended. Thank you very much. So, Josh, how long have you been in the fish game? Is it in the blood, yeah, your DNA? So I'm sixth generation in my family. Brixham is a bit of a gem and realise that the fish is something special. We get probably on the market every day about 35 to 40 different species of fish, and that's what separates us from a lot of other harbours. These boys pride themselves on a fast turnaround to make sure the fish is at its freshest. Take this place, for example. You can see the shine. I mean, up close, it, it doesn't smell of fish. So we would try and get that cut and prepared out to a restaurant same day. But if it's going around the country, I would probably give that three days max to be consumed. I may not have had any luck catching place, but I'm hoping my prepping skills are up to scratch instead. Right, so you are the Yoda filleter. I am indeed. I am your Jedi Knight. We'll see. I'm going to learn from the best. Fill it in place each. Yeah. These two nice fish. I tell you what, you have the big one, because I just don't want to waste that beautiful big fish. When you start, which way would you have them up? Head that, that side? Head, head facing that way. Head facing that way, yeah. So then you come in just round by the neck here, and then you'll feel the bone. You'll feel the back backbone of yeah, the fish. Yeah, got it there, yeah. You feel it? Yeah. Run your knife all the way down it, but don't push too far through. 
Plaice are a sneaky fish. It's a bottom feeder. It's flat and feeds off the seabed. It's flat for evolutionary purposes. But that makes it even harder to fill it. You're too young to remember, but I feel like I'm on the fish filleting generation game here. I know you should fill it. Should we turn it over and do the other side? Yeah, OK. Yeah. Can I ask how long it took you to get to the standard you are now? Oh, it's got to be about four or five years to, to be a real decent filler. It's not as easy as it looks, but I am feeling like I might be a cut above the rest. Oh, that one's not bad, I'd actually. actually. I would actually eat that. Would you? I will. I, will. <laughs> I love fishing for compliments. I've it's got okay. the hang of this fillet and like now. What's next? Give me anything. John? Yeah, John Dory, hope you like, mate. Gurnard. I'm in the busy Devon fishing port of Brixham, where life centres around the harbour. Having just butchered my place, I'm heading off to see if it's actually going to be salvageable. How are you, matey? Hello, Rothen. How are you? I'm very well. Got some fresh place for you. Filleted by my own fair hand. Guess which ones I did. Well, I guess this one. Yeah, it was that one, yeah. But it's going to taste the same once oh, you cook it, isn't it? I don't know. That's pretty poor cutting. Yeah, sorry. It's OK, I'll work with the rest, cos I've got plenty here. They do things a little bit differently down here, and instead of the typical fish and chips, I'm learning a Devonshire delicacy. OK, so very simply, into some flour, shake that off, into some egg wash, that helps it stick on the breadcrumbs, and then into some nice, fine panko, cos it gives it absolutely beautiful crispness. And then that's it, simple. Is place really popular in the UK? Oh, yeah, in the south, yeah, I would say it's probably the third favourite fish down here. Really? We've got cod, haddock, hake is up there as well. Right. Uh, but place has always been a firm favourite. And as a chef, is part of the appeal for you that it's come in literally onto your doorstep from the ocean? Oh, that, that's the best, that's the ultimate. Anyway, Kirk, uh, my stomach thinks my throat's being cut. I'm starving. Let me try this skipper roll then. So we just drain the oil off that a little bit. We always use the jalapeno tartar. It's a little bit on the bottom of the roll. Lovely. The cucumber gives it a nice crisp bite to it. A bit of rocket and a very fine chiffonade of iceberg. And then that fillet beautifully sits on top. And then we just stick that with a little chilli pepper as it's a lemon. That, mate, is a work of art, and I hope it tastes as good as it looks and smells. I got stuck straight in that quick that I burnt my mouth. And on a day like today, I suspect this place is going to be rammed soon, eh? Sunny days bring people out to eat by the seaside, and I think there's, there's nothing more special than getting your takeaway, going and sitting over there, looking over the harbour, and eating the fish and chips. It's the, it's the magic that connects and gives you that whole experience, and uh, that's why I live here. And now for the ultimate taste test for the people of Brixham. Come on, roll up, roll up, for one time only today. You might have had your cod in your honey, but you've never tasted a place like this. Hello, madam. Have you ever had a skipper roll? No. Well, this is a first for you. There you go. Tell me what you think of that. How is that? Really yeah? Good. You know the best bit about it? It's free. How does that taste? Watch out for the cucumber. It's good, isn't it? Fresh is best, isn't it? And eating it on a sunny day like this. Yeah. Do you know what? After tasting that, would you try that again? Yeah. Brilliant. I'm going to try it again right now. Come on, we only got four left, and they're free. Who wants some free, fresh fish? And that, that piece of fish in there, filleted by my own fair hand. Yeah, smashing. Have you had place before? Yeah, but well, we weren't as good as that. I know, it's good, because it's fresh, man. Beautiful. There you go. A lot of happy customers. Right, where to next? The Southwest has always been about escape. Escape from the sea, escape from the revenue, escape from the pirates. But for my family, it was always an escape from the stresses and strains of life. We would, as a family, head towards a caravan with my dad's Hilminim. It would take us anything from nine to 14 hours. It was absolutely brutal. 
But man, once we got here, it was gorgeous. So many happy memories when I come to this part of the world. And one of the best was when, not far from here, I caught my first ever fish from the sea. And after that experience, I was hooked, man. Hooked, line and sinker. Now, it's a separate country down here. Not just in terms of culture or language, but the life below the waves. There's a whole separate breed beneath these waters. I've come to the famous holiday destination of Newquay. And although I'm not going out on the surf, I am going in search of a fish that's always remained a mystery to me. They are crawfish, and they're little freaks. Morning, chaps. How are you? Morning. How are you doing? Father and son. Which yeah. one's the dad? <laughs> See what I did there? Interesting name you've got on your boat there. Tis hardly on. Say it again. Tis hardly on. Tis hardly on. That's the name of your boat. Yeah. That, what's that translated into? You cannot be serious. You cannot be serious. Yeah. What, John McEnroe's been on your boat? <laughs> Get out, be serious. <laughs> <laughs> so crawfish. The only time I've ever heard of crawfish is in a song sung by Elvis Presley and Kitty White in the film King Creole. Oh, yeah. Crawfish. So I thought they resided in the creeks of Tennessee, not off the king coast of, the of Cornwall. Sea, I call them. The king of the sea. King of the sea. In my 40 years of fishing, I have never, ever encountered a crawfish in British waters. But with good weather, a good boat and good blokes, I'm hoping the odds are in our favour. And these mystical legends reveal themselves. Martin and Dan sail the seas every day in their search for the crustaceous crawfish. Part of the lobster family, they're golden orange looking things and covered in tiny spines. Best office in the world, isn't it? Sunshine, no traffic. And if you can catch some fish and earn some money, it makes it even better. But I don't do it for the money, I do it just for the love of it. I want to get my peepers on one of these creatures, but the cynic in me just doesn't believe they're out there. They got wiped out of it in the late 70s and the 80s. People were catching mass amounts of crawfish, 50, 60 a day. After extensive overfishing, crawfish were almost completely wiped out on British shores. What's the biggest crawfish you've seen? Uh, about four kilo in weight. What? Nearly 10 pound? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, big orange one like that. You have obviously like eating yeah, crawfish. I, mean, it's, it's... I think it's overrated. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be the worst salesman I've ever come across. That's brilliant. <laughs> Don't know about you, but I'm ready. Ready to catch myself a crawfish crafty critter. I hope they're here. Right, so net's coming in. How long's the net, Dan? Uh, half a mile. Long. Half a mile? Yeah. Wow. Here they come! And then the fish start coming in. Just not the ones we're after. But we've got some blonde rays. Some more blonde rays. Even Seems more rays. Be, uh, an abundance of blonde rays, which they can sell. I honestly thought we were going fishing for crawfish. But look at all these spider crabs and so many rays. I mean, that's the thing about fishing. You go out for one thing, but you can come up with something completely different, like today. There ain't no craze, but there's a lot of rays. I think the spider crabs have eaten all the crawfish. Yeah, they are, they? And just as we're getting ready to pack up and go home... Crawfish! Crawfish! Yeah! yeah. Oh, he's a beauty, and that is a keeper. That is your Cornish crawfish. And I honestly thought they only resided in America. Well done, guys. I never doubted you for a second. And just like buses, you wait all day for one. Big one, big craw. Oh, there he is. That 
Whoa, just when you thought it couldn't get any better. Wow. After the tragedy of the crawfish dying off, something magical happened. They started to make a comeback. No one knows why. Perhaps they just needed to be left alone. To think this creature here is worth more than about 40 of those rays. Astonishing. That's a stunner. For years, it was tin, fishing, and tourism. But the Southwest is making a comeback in this new world we live in. This is the area the whole of Britain wants to come to. It's like the tide of the sea going out and coming back in. So, with confirmation that crawfish are in our waters after all, I'm keen to find out what all the fuss is about. And the locals have suggested a perfect place. Afternoon, matey. How are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? Oh, I'm, I'm fine. I've had a lovely day at sea. I brought you some treasure from the deep. Oh, some treats. Absolutely fantastic. Now, These are beauty, isn't he? I was going to say, as I was walking in, notice that you don't have crawfish on the menu. We do when fishermen nip it in. So whenever we come in, we'll put them straight into the menu. Mate, so one, one and a half kilo today. for you of crawfish. Fantastic. Why are they so expensive? <sighs> it's all lobsters are, to be honest with you. Yeah? Yeah, everything's absolutely shot up in prices and they're just hard. They're not, you know, there's not much being caught at the moment. Well, I've heard you're the man who can turn anything into something tasty, is Thank that true? Thank you very much, that is true, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Right, well, I've got the crawfish. How does this sound? The Cornish pasty. <laughs> what do they have in it? They have beef skirt, onion and potato? And, and uh, Swede, yeah. Would you ever make a seafood pasty? Sacrilege. Sacrilege? Absolutely sacrilege. Pasty blasphemy, is Maybe it? Maybe push the boat out a little bit and do seafood, but you wouldn't dare put one of them in there. <laughs> would you not? I think you'd absolutely just... Yeah, you'd... No. <laughs> so what, we're just not going to be do anything fancy, just keep it simple? Just yeah? keep it simple, yeah. Mate, I'll let you do your stuff and let the pictures right. do the talking. Right, fantastic. Beautiful bit of flesh of meat. You really don't need to do very much. Some flour, some breadcrumbs and some frying. This is a first, one of many firsts on this coastal adventure. Never had crawfish. There you go. This job's hell, you know. I'm just okay, just. <laughs> oh. Yeah. That is absolutely beautiful. Fresh is best, always. Have you guys tried crawfish? Mate, come and have a taste of this. Good, huh? Take it out your wages, mate. <laughs> and to think, I went out to sea on one of those boats and we caught crawfish, amazing, tasted, sensational, and we caught king crab, and we caught hundreds of spider crab. But he said there's no demand for them. And I'm thinking, why? They're insanely gorgeous. Seriously, try spider crab. Did you hear about the crab that went to the seafood ball? Yeah. Pulled the muscle. My southwest journey has brought me to Cornwall. With a coastline of over 300 miles, was once a hotbed of activity for marauders like Long John Silver and Blackbeard. Thankfully today, the seas are sailed by a more respectable sort and the land loved by characters committed to their coastal communities. It's not just about catching fish. It's about those hidden craftsmen who build the boats that keep the fishermen safe on the ocean. It's about the men and women who make and mend the nets, the fish processors, the seafood chefs. This entire community of extraordinary people who have a definite sense of identity and worth and a sense of place. I kind of envy them. As my time in this beautiful part of the world comes to an end, I'm going to Padstow to see another side to coastal living.
Wow, what a beautiful day. And what a gorgeous fishing town Padstow is. And the thing is, there's so many places like this dotted along the southwest coastline, bursting with history to uncover. Yeah, you could just be ambling along on a day like this, and you never quite know what's around the corner. That is, until you get there. Good morning, Padstow Rowing Club. Good morning. morning. Welcome, Padstow Gig Rowing Club. This is a Cornish pilot gig. It's 32 feet in length. There's an awful lot of tradition based around the pilot gigs. It dates right back to the 17th century. They used to use gigs exactly like this to row pilots out. They used to race out to the ships. Whoever got on there first got the job. So, yeah, there's a lot of tradition, a lot of heritage around it, something we're very, very proud of here in Padstow. So what's the plan today? Tell me about this gig race. Yeah, so today you've joined us. We're doing one of what we call our doom bar races. We are going to race a friendly inter-estuary race with rock just over the water there. The doom bar is a famous sandbar on the Camel Estuary, which gets its name from Cornish folklore. The story goes that the mermaid of Padstow fell in love with a local man, and when he escaped her advances, she shot him and cursed the harbour with a bar of doom, one that would ultimately be covered with wrecks of ships and the bodies of men. So if you meet a lassie out on the town and you think she might be a mermaid, treat her right. So is there any way I can help? Because if I, if I row, I'll just be in hindrance. Why don't you uh, jump in the pilot seat right up in the bow there? You can, uh, you can start the race for us. You'll be, um, yeah, huge contribution. I Cheer can, on your crew. I can start the race, I can motivate you, yeah. and I can provide ballast. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, you are sporting the competitors' colours with your blue. It's to match me eye. Yeah. So we are, we are going to put you in a, in a padstow top. OK, great. We can't have it otherwise. Right. <laughs> It's like an audition. I'm nervous. <laughs> I'm not even rowing. Right, are we in it to win it? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Are we in it to win it? Yes. yes. Yeah. There you Come go. On. Come on. Come on. Come on. And now I'm covered in the club colours, it's time to make my mark on gig racing. See the finish line? Cut the atmosphere with a cricket stomp. Here we go. This is for the glory of Padstow. Are we in it to win it? OK. Go! Come on, Padstow, you can do it. This is what you've been training for. Come on, guys, you can do it. This is serious. This is serious. Now, the other Padstow boat have taken an early lead. I think this is all about conservation of energy. Hey, that's it, guys. You're doing it now. Coming up well, coming up against them. Come on, guys, you've got this. One last push, you can do it. I think we're gonna win. Come on, come on, you've got it. One last push, come on. Come on, come on, come on. You've got it, you've got it. Woohoo! Congratulations, Padstow. You did it. Well done, guys, well done. What a buzz, what a rush, well done. I, I thought it was just going to be a bit of fun, honestly. And then all you guys with your smiling faces, you all went horribly serious. I went, oh, hang on. And then you took off, and then you started racing, everybody took it really seriously. I'm happy to take my share of the glory. I'd like to think I helped out in some way. Ah, oh, what a great bunch just goes to show how teamwork and hard graft pays off. See, when you think about it, sea shanties are just work songs meant to be sung alongside hard labour, such as hoisting the sail or raising the anchor. And the melodies and the tunes, they're repetitive, but they are uplifting, so everyone can sing along and join in. And like poetry, it's a form of expression that can have an incredibly positive effect on your emotional and mental state of mind. And you know what they say, there's only one thing better than singing, and that's more singing.
all good journeys must come to an end. And I leave Padstow and head north to set up camp in St George's Cove for one final time. This place is a land full of adventure and escape. But why would you ever want to leave this? What I've really enjoyed on this journey is meeting the people who genuinely love living along the British coastline. And I have been genuinely fascinated by what happens to the fish, the journey it goes on once it's taken from out there. And the amazing amount of work that goes into bringing a fish supper to you and me. The Southwest is a place of storms, sea monsters, oh my God, and fish that wouldn't look out of place in the tropics. But the best bit about the British coast is that it's the only one in the world. And it's ours. And it's great. Next time, I'm in Scotland, catching monsters. Hey! Where I clash with some creels, and I heave a dinosaur from the deep. Well, that's an extraordinary fish, man. And Robson's back on the Scottish West Coast next Saturday night at 7. And you can join Robson's invigorating and inspiring walk from coast to coast, streaming now on My5. New next tonight on Channel 5, a look at how Princess Marina of Greece became a player in Britain's most famous family. And then the forgotten royal. Fascinating stuff in just a moment.